it is blameworthy to avoid the lawful out of doubt over its lawfulness. Knowledge of Allah, sallallahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates great fear of him. So it is blameworthy to avoid the lawful out of doubt. Because I am... Uh, no, 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 this kissing of the thing, I'm still doubtful of that. I'm going to avoid it. Some people say that. Milad Sharif, these people do it, but I want to just avoid it because I don't want to get into the cross fire of all of this. This is considered to be sinful. It is blameworthy to avoid the lawful out of doubt. Why? Because the righteous and people have been doing so. Who on earth are you? Suddenly come over and you become the mujtahid, Mr. Albani and so on so you became a mujtahid and no one gave you permission about hadith no one gave you permission about fiqh no one gave you permission about the tafsir and you making the tafsir you making the hadith you correcting the hadith Allahu Akbar then qiyamah is close and so when people listen to people like that who have no license in it then you know that this is the sign of the day of judgment Allahu Akbar they should be very careful. The Prophet, peace be upon him, exceeds all humanity in knowledge of Allah and fear of him. And Allah placed him in the highest station of knowledge and fear. Those who have attained knowledge of Allah say that if the knowledge and fear of Allah are perfected in a person and they reach true knowledge and true fear, the effects of this can be seen upon them. A muttaqi, you can see the effects of it. You can see reflecting from it. You can feel it. No one has to say anything. The moment you meet them, you can see from their forehead they are righteous and pious and muttaqi people. Some people, too much. A certain person, uh, my father relates that he was very uh, staunch on the sunnah. So the table and the chair is a new uh, bid'ah, it's an innovation. So he says, SubhanAllah, how do I get around this? And he didn't want to disappoint my father. So he quickly jumped upon the chair, like in the sitting posture. My father said, SubhanAllah, what on earth happened to you? You jumped onto it <laughs> and you're sitting like you're sitting on a floor or something. But this is the ta'wil. Sometimes there is excessiveness of that and you have to remember adjustability. Given the situation that the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu went somewhere else in front of their delegation. If the, the delegation had uh, chairs available, do you think the beloved Prophet Muhammad would not have sat on it? You don't know up until you ask that question. What we know is that the delegation came to the beloved Prophet Muhammad and the beloved Prophet Muhammad due to non-materialism, he didn't even have the basics of a chair. So he pulled down his shawl onto the floor and honored them like that. Do you know more than a chair and something on it people honored, they felt honored in this way. <laughs>